All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Void Dweller and Olga. Welcome back to, or should I say, welcome to Ushinabu. I was a last Mondays day. It's been a long, long, long time since I did a Yuri series, ever since Seabed. I'm currently waiting for uh, Chaos Head to finally fucking release, and uh, I was told that this was fairly short and would fit nicely uh, between uh, that and that release. And you know what? I looked at it, saw, you know, the production values look really, really nice. And uh, I hope all the volume levels are okay for everybody. Hello, Zarmagus. Welcome to the stream. And uh, yeah, I, it, looks, it looks really sweet. So let's start. Oh, hello, Relast. Welcome to the stream. I don't know what Arknights have to do with this, Olga. But we'll see. Oh, oh, wow, there's a voice. There was a story I was enamored with as a, as a child. A tale of romance that enthralled and excited. その物語の中では宇宙からやってきた女の子が地球人の男の子にたくさんの大きな愛を叫んでいた。in that story, an alien descended from the stars to loudly proclaim her love to an earthling man. I thought this was how love played out for adults, whirling into their lives like a tornado. So, how are you going to Again, I hope this voice fits this character. If it doesn't, I'll change it. It's the first episode, all bets are off. When I shared my thoughts with my mum, she smiled wryly and told me Mummy would be sad if some stranger came and swept me away. Still, I never imagined that now, decades later, I'd play a role in such a story. <laughs> the man drew his sword and fixed me with his steely gaze. My heart pounded urgently. With a yell, he brought the blade down on the box which split open with a flash of blinding light. Gulping, I... Fixed his image. Uh, oh, typos already. Image in my mind, and <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe the voice might not fit her. Painfully familiar silhouettes appeared on the screen, and the smartphone clutched in, clutched in my hand. Oh my god! <laughs> An offhand. Can response showed up in the textbooks over the sword wielding man. I ought to do. Ah, Mata Dobu. Oh my god! Uh oh. Money down the drain again. <laughs> oh, oh my god. No, yep. Never mind. I gotta change your voice. Uh, why do I get everyone excited? Oh my god! In the mobile game Swordsman for Sale, known to its fans by the shortened name, Japanese name Kensho, you collect famous swordsmen from history to put together the strongest team of cell swords. Oh my god, it's like fate! <laughs> my husband was Akiyama Kohikun, and he was up as an SR in the most recent limited time gacha campaign. <laughs> The words 30 minutes to go were splashed across the screen, urging me to try to spot more pull. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the drop rates in this game are way harsh. 
Oh, look. You got Hazel Queen's SR. <laughs> like I said, everyone else! Right. My father still hasn't come home. Of course, I had his rares, but still, fuck that stupid shit. You in it for the SSR or nothing? Which is why today was the day. Although it didn't seem like that for my longtime friend Shino. Hello, Doris, welcome to the stream. She'd been nonchalantly drinking her tea the whole time. Ah, she was only so relaxed because neither of her favorite pairings were in the pool this time. <laughs> oh, isn't that like your fifth Hazo SR? You can make a full baseball team of Hazos. Oh my god, she probably reached max potential already. Oh my god, so they'll just, if it was Arc Knights, they would just turn into yellow certs. <laughs> the art in this is fantastic. <laughs> Why would I make a team without my own sword? No! The single player experience is more than enough for me. I mean, if I even had one of him. Gulping down a mouthful of my coffee. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which was the price of two gotchables. <laughs> oh my god, so it was a cheap coffee then. I heaved a deep sigh. Maybe if I spent that money on caution instead of going good by now. You're too relatable! Stop! Uh, it's really good. The cool rim of the copper mug seemed to have cooled me down too. I was converting everything around me into gacha currency. <laughs> God. If I sold the outfit. Oh no, it's a great outfit. Don't sell it. I love it. I was wearing right now. That could be ten <laughs> for a ten ball. Oh God! No, this is what they want you to do. <laughs> Don't sell that outfit though. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> so, how much did you put into it this time? Huh? You know, she sounds a bit more mature. Ah, uh, god, I'll try to find her voice. Yeah, but, and I love Xion's outfit too, Olga, so there you go. My thoughts, which have been drifting to Gacha Land, I'm pulled back to earth by Shino's words. Careful, I couldn't afford to waste a single second! <sighs> About two months' rent. Oh god! Oh god! Akuru, no! No! Wow, you're in deep. Even though I was working every day for the sake of my Osbondo, sinking in hundreds of dollars isn't exactly easy on my wallet. I knew that, but this time was super special! I mean... Going back into the game. I opened up the gotcha screen again. Image from the event's SR card. Kohi Kun, dressed in a dashing white tuxedo, filled the screen. Yep, it's Kohi Kun's banner. We got 30 minutes left on it. Oh my god. The theme of the event was Spring Wedding. Has she already played the storyline? In other words, this was no ordinary gotcha. This is my once in a lifetime chance to marry my husband. Oh my god. Oh, he's a limited character. Oh god. <sighs> wow. That's painful. That is painful. If there's a limited you want, you gotta save up for it. But you see, the theme this time is a wedding, right? 
So, like, pulling the card is like proposing to your husband. Okay. <laughs> At least say that an engagement ring should cost about three months' salary, right? <laughs> yeah, and. And doesn't that mean I should be prepared to put in three months' salary? I guess she prefers 2D guys. <laughs> Olga, no, I haven't. I haven't. I really don't. By save up, I meant save up the free currency that you get what by playing the game. That's what I do. I haven't spent money on it in a long, long time. Only in the very beginning, like a couple of years ago. Hang on. If I put my spring bonus in all together. You got a problem. Akuru, you got a problem. Oh, God. Hey, uh, Achan, didn't you put all that event merch on your credit card last month? Oof. Uh, yeah? I don't have a problem! And, aren't you forgetting you're gonna get charged for it this month? A sharp pain lands through my chest. <laughs> Other than cold hard cash, there was also this magical card you should use. But even that card had its limits. In other words, this is my last chance! Oh no! There no pity rate? Oh god. If this fails, there's always the money from my utilities bill! Hello, Mira! Welcome to the stream. Uh, Achan. Yeah. No, it's not fair on him to think about failure. I must always keep the victory in mind and love for my husband. Huh? Yeah, I'll go with the British because she does sound like pretty mature, even though what she's saying is very goofy. <laughs> I'll put all my power into this one shot! No, this one tap, but please bring my husband home! Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Just as I was about to jab my trembling finger onto the screen, I heard a small voice. Uh, oh, got it. At the same time. A cheer went up. It seemed like something was going on at the register. A crowd there was blocking the entrance to the cafe. Uh -huh. Huh? With my finger still hovering in midair, I looked over in that direction. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> no idea. Vaguely curious, I stood to get a better look. I could see a girl in the middle of the crowd. The girl glanced at me before turning her gaze back to the register. Uh, mind if I go take a look? Sure, go ahead. I'll be right back. I got up from my seat. The girl's clothes were all garishly bright, like they'd been colored in with crayon. She looked like something spilled out, out of an upended toy box. She was wearing a short pink skirt and an aqua blue sweater. When I got up close to her, her sparkling expression was almost blinding. Yay, thanks so much! The girl looked triumphant as the store clerk handed her a ticket along with a congratulations. The 
looking over, I saw a panel beside the register advertising the chance to enter some kind of lottery with your purchase. The main prize showed the silhouette of a castle with the words, All Expenses Paid Overseas Trip with Two Theme Park Tickets splashed across it. They really had splurged on the grand prize. Whoa. Nice. If only I had the same kind of luck. The crowd started to disperse as the girl stowed the tickets away in her bag. Then, as though suddenly noticing me standing there, she tilted her head at me curiously. Hey, you want this lady? Oh, uh, no. I hurriedly waved my hands around in denial, completely forgetting I was still cl clutching my phone. Oh! Ah! Then remembering what was currently open on my screen, I quickly hugged it to my chest. But I was too late. After staring intently at the screen for a moment, the girl raised her head to look at me. That's like one of those games, right? Like a gotcha game! Huh? How did this clearly trendy, trendy and popular girl know that nerdy word? So, uh, yes, it is. Oh, she's a good luck charm. My friends are like always asking me to fall for them or whatever, since I have such good luck. She explained to me. Clearly reading my thoughts and my puzzled expression, our hair is completely different, and I have glasses. Olga. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, I see. Girl beamed up at me, her eyes wide and round like a little forest creature. Pink gloss showing seductively on her lips. <laughs> Want me to give it a try for you, lady? Uh, hang on. Hello, apparition. Welcome to the stream. As she reached out her hand to me, I instinctively pulled back. But that just made her stretch forward even further, looking a little offended. I don't even know you. For all I know, you might just steal my phone. Oh, come on! You just saw me win that prize. Uh, but it's not... Let me just give it one go! My entire future rests on that one go! Using the inches I had on her, I lifted my phone above her head. After giving me a hard stare, she switched gears and reached for something else. Oh. Oh. All the strength left me as her hand slid over my- Oh my god. Definitely catching the phone as it fell from my limp grasp. She grinned at me impulsively like a kid who just pulled off a prank. Oh my god, jeez. Hi, Wynn. You're so cute, lady. Uh, uh, no! My words died on my lips as the image on the screen changed. Oh my god, jeez. The man with the sword looked at me, then swung. As the light effect enveloped the screen, I screwed my eyes shut. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. My one chance and everything riding on it was stolen from me and smashed to smithereens by this random girl. Hello, T. Welcome to the stream. I was already writing my own eulogy as I timidly opened my eyes. <laughs> Looks like something decent. Huh? There in the girl's hand, standing in front of a bright, bright chapel, was a softly smiling man in a shy tuxedo. <laughs> Tousled dark brown hair, a sweet smile, a short sword at his hip, and the proposal. You must be quite the dilettante. 
looking to exchange vows with an old coder like me. Are you sure? Kohikun chuckled good naturedly, looking a little bashful. <laughs> I hugged the girl's hand the, and the phone in it, or rather the Kohikun in it, to me. <laughs> I want to marry you! Oh god. Misunderstandings. Huh? huh? Grabbing the device in both hands, I gazed down at Kohikun on the screen. The gentle smile gracing my groom's face. I had to marry him! Oh, wait. Are we already married? figure before me was so sudden, suddenly dashing, I felt dizzy, like my brain had been put into a blender. Huh? What? Oh god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I promise to make you happy. I'll devote myself to you. I love you so much. I'd wanted to tell him so desperately, yet now that it came down to it, I couldn't seem to get the words out properly. Oh my god. All I knew was that uh, while I'd been savoring the bliss of knowing I could be with the one I love forever, the words to have to say yes had appeared on the screen. A lady? girl's voice snapped me back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. Oh, crap. I was squeezing my phone so hard I was about to crack it. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> you scared me. You're so intense, lady. The girl's cheeks were slightly flushed. I didn't really understand what she was saying. <laughs> well, that's love for you. Was I intense? I thought I was just in love. The girl's face flushed an even deeper shade of red as she lowered her gaze. <laughs> oh, God. Well, this sure is moving fast. But I'm happy. Thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, thanks. I'm really happy too. Finally, releasing the girl's hand, I took my phone back. Seriously, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, sure, but, uh, uh, that we just said. Uh, ah, Chan. Oh, Oh, sorry. See you later. Chino has been watching the whole goddamn thing. Now that things have calmed down, she wanted to get my attention. Eager to tell her about Kohi Kun, I thanked the girl again before rushing back to my friend. <laughs> what were you doing with that teeny bopper? You won't believe it! Shino, look at this! Is that Akiyama Kohi's new SR Sakura wedding? My husband has finally come home. Oh, we're getting married. <sighs> I let out a long, blissful sigh. I expected Shino to share in my excitement, but her reaction was surprisingly diluted. <laughs> oh, so that's why you said you want to get married. I think uh, somebody might have gotten a mixed signal there, but that might lead to a... 
hilariously romantic outcome. Huh? I sent her a questioning look, but she was looking past me, towards the girl I've been talking to. Chin in hand, she no muttered to herself, clearly deep in thought. Then something seemed to occur to her. <laughs> what the hell? I'm sure I've seen this play out in the manga before. Boo, she laughed. Uh, this could be... Oh, I didn't... At that moment in time, I was so obsessed with my Osbondo, the girl immediately vanished from my mind. Little did I know the mess I'd gotten myself into. Here we go. Starting the game. I'm done for the day. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. After saying goodbye to my co-workers, I left the hotel where I worked. Suppressing the urge to skip all the way back home, I settled for simply hurrying. <laughs> I'm so happy Kohi-kun's come home. I could die! I pulled out my phone while I walked. When I started up the Kensho app, Kogi Kun was there waiting for me as usual in his tuxedo. The top page text that accompanied him made my heart flutter every time. Huh? I love you. Savoring that joy, I knew my life would be a breeze from here on out. Oh. So I thought. Oh, <laughs> hey, lady! Long time to see! The moment I heard that voice, I was struck by a shock. Oh. <gasps> so you do work at the Imperial Oso Hotel, huh? Oh. Oh. Oh, not a... Huh? Hey, you I looked back over my shoulder. Starling there was the girl I'd met yesterday in the cafe, her eyes shining ever brighter than they had back then. What? Oh god. What? Did you forget your fiance's face? Here we go. Huh? For a moment I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Fiance? Fiance? You proposed to me, remember? And then you, like, ran off! P proposed? P proposed! That was even more unbelievable! D what are you talking about? Seemingly oblivious to my confusion, the girl continued sulkily. It's a good job I had your business card. You're like a pickpocket or something. My... my what? Hold up just a second. I couldn't wrap my head around what was happening. First things first, I had to get her off me. Grabbing her by the wrist, I feel her off me. Thankfully, she stepped back. Oh, my bad. I don't even know who you are. I'm Ren. Ren Furutachi. Furutachi-san, is it? Oh, what are you doing here? Although my, although my workplace wasn't too far from where we met the other day in Kinshicho, it was too much of a co coincidence to just bump into each other here. 
The girl answered my suspicious question nonchalantly. We're getting married, aren't we? So I like looked at your business card and came to meet you after work. You have my business card. Yep. Here. My eye twitched as I looked down at the card she pulled out of her bag. The name and logo of the hotel I worked at was stamped in gold lit on the card. You dropped it at the cafe. Remember? Uh, right. Now that she mentioned it, I did remember I'd slipped some cards into my phone case when I went to some exhibition or other. I guess one could have fallen out. Still, it was quite a coincidence. Hey, so mind if I call you Akuru? Uh, Furutachi san called me by my name on my card, like we were old friends. And then she was saying we were going to get married. Uh, that was impossible. Uh, wait, uh, what's this about getting married? <laughs> I was shook too! I never had such an intense proposal! So she'd have other proposals. <laughs> but you're like so pretty! I figured yellow! Oh my. Uh. Why the hell would she think I'd propose to her? And then I remembered. The scene that just Get happened five minutes ago. I want to marry you. Uh, what? I promise to make you happy. I'll devote myself to you. I hope I love you so much. Uh, lady? No, no, no. Uh, that wasn't what I meant. Uh, not at all. Uh, those words have been meant for Kaki-kun, not her. What wasn't? Oh. oh, my. I've gotten stuffed it all up, haven't I? Uh, uh, that was to my hus... I cut myself off. I didn't want to tell this random girl whose name I barely knew, this cool girl, how about my geeky hobbies. Although maybe it's a bit late for that. Huh? <laughs> I was saying it to someone else. Yes, of course. Someone else in the room that you didn't see. Who? Oh. Uh, uh, look over there! <laughs> so, that proposal was what? A joke? Furutachi saw impressed me, clearly dissatisfied with my response. Uh, this way she was puffing out her cheek. The way she was puffing out her cheek was super cute. But in all my 26 years of life, I'd only ever loved 2D men. She was 3D and a girl. Uh, no. It wasn't a joke. It was impossible. Uh, sure, there had been a time when I'd yearned for something real. But that time was long gone. Plus, I'd never been into the same sex. So it was for real! Her eyes lit up. She looked like she was about to leap into my arms. So I held her back with both hands. Uh, stop right there. It was a misunderstanding. I'm sorry, but I can't go out with you. Uh, 
really? So, uh, really? So, relief there seemed to have gotten through to her. I let out my breath. But alas, I was naive. But I really like you, Akuru! <laughs> Hotachi-san clung onto my arm, breathing up at me. It's a shame. It's a shame we're postponing the wedding. But I love you! So give me your number! Huh? She was already pulling out her phone, driving with dozens of cute keychains. Please! Uh, uh, what? She loved me. Uh, no, you don't just go throwing that word around. Besides, this was moving away too fast for me to keep up. Oh dear, are all young people these days so pushy? Uh, this girl was crazy intense, like some kind of alien from outer space. I'm sure I had wanted to thank her, but never in a million years I'd expect her to come to my workplace and demand my number. Uh, come on, give me your number! She opened up her messaging app and looked at me expectantly. What's the problem? Yeah. I... I was Being around me might work in your favor. I'm pretty lucky. Uh, well, I... Honestly, that was a pretty inviting proposition. Scoring tickets to live shows got her. Otaku's life was all about luck. And that really already seen with my own eyes just how lucky this girl could be. Mm. I silently held out my phone to her. It was a transaction. A business arrangement to protect my life with my husband, though, to deepen our love. Thanks. I'll text you, Akuru. Oh, dear. And that was how Akuru Hayahoshi met Ren Furutachi. Or rather, how the universe threw them together. In transition. <laughs> no way! I was in the break room at the Imperial Asa Hotel. My screen that got all around those small rooms situated behind the lavish reception hall, dripping with glitter and chandeliers. Phone clutched in my hands. My eyes were glued to the words on screen. Ah, <laughs> 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 your attack is not showing. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sheena stared blearily at me of her convenience store rice bowl. Our lunch break was the only time Sheena and I got to talk, as she was in the linens department while I was out front. I had a habit of lapsing into fandom talk uh, whenever we were able to get together. Uh, no, but Nishiki-san, this is an issue related to my work efficiency. <laughs> Why are you using my last name? I'm blending in. Of course, Hayahoshi-san. Pink thing on the right? I, I think that's just the corner of the text box. Oh, this, oh, this thing on the right side. I have no idea. Oh, it's a menu. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. As we stealthily continued our conversation, I deliberately held my phone out for her to see. Kensho. Kensho is holding a fan event! For real? 
ちょうど15時のメンテナンス明けだからなんか来るかなとは思ってたんだけどね。メンテナンス just ended, so I think it's something might be announced. From what I could gather from the in-game announcement, they're building an IRL van meeting. My hands are consciously tightened around my phone. It's finally here. A real live event. You're gonna go? Obviously. I get to hear Koei Kun's voice live. And I bet they'll sell merch. You really think I wouldn't go to the very first event? What kind of fan do you think I am, honestly? Will Kohi Kun actually be there? How the bloody hell should I know? So you don't even know. Uh, wait, I'll check right now. Uh, yes, of course. Checking, checking, checking. Uh, I've got so carried away to my hive, I'd forgotten to check the most important thing. I quickly went back to reading the rest of the announcement. the time and place the event along with the list of participating characters mm. huh. Shino opened the app on her own phone too and, s and scanned the cast list looks like all the main characters are in uh, yes you're right mm. Miyasas is on there too. Huh. They haven't announced the schedule yet, and the voice actors. They haven't posted anything to Tritter either. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We have Toe Witter, and now we have Tritter. <laughs> she never squinted down at her phone. Her eyes flicking up and down as she quickly scroll, scroll through sh social media. The info gathering speed of a powerful Joshi who ran three dojin circles at once was truly a force to be reckoned with. Jeez Louise, oh my god. Mm. <sighs> I bet the lottery tickets are gonna come up with a drama CD. Come with a drama CD. Drama CD. Oh crap, I gotta pre order a whole bunch! If the lottery tickets came with the CD, then the only way to gain more chances was to buy more CDs. It's a fucking scam, I tell you, a scam! But I'm too far, I'm too deep in, man. I got to go, I got to buy it. Oh. You're basically obligated to buy a whole stack. Oh bloody hell. <laughs> Didn't you just plug all your money into the gacha event? Can you afford it? <laughs> I got my paycheck, so I'm good! I've spoken too soon. Hold up. Look at this. Shino turned her phone around to show me. It was over on some kind of article. <laughs> Kensho fan event announced lottery chance 1 in 50. What? 1 in 50? 1 in 50? So the chance of winning a ticket to the lottery was 2%. In Gata terms, that was like pulling an SR. Exactly, yeah. That's the that's the sixth tour rate for Ark Knights. But you hit pity, but you start building up pity once you hit 50 pulls. What was in my bank right now? I could stretch to 20 coppers at most. Definitely not a guarantee win. <laughs> Judging by the number of players and the capacity of the venue, 
It's not looking good. You don't need to bloody tell me that! And you have, like, the worst luck. She was right. I knew that damn well. If only there was some way to cure my bad luck curse. Oh. Oh, my God. Do I dare tempt fate? Uh, huh? You come up with something? Finally trying to sell your organs, I guess, knowing you. I'm not there! Just yet. <laughs> oh, God! Although, this might actually be the harder option. Oh god, she actually did it! Hey, Akuru! Isn't this that place like totally super cute? Uh, could you stop pulling me? A paper bag hung, hung heavily from my hand. My decrepit millennial body bearing the weight of 20 CDs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, us millennials, yeah, we're not we're not very strong. <laughs> oh, maybe I was bearing the weight of the entire situation. All I need today are the CDs. Ren sent me a stern look. Ugh, this girl was scary. <laughs> oh, you know, a little fart like me has no place in a young person's store. <laughs> You're young too, says the Gen Zia. In order to win the lottery and attend the fan meeting, I first have to get lucky with the lottery tickets. With that thought in mind, I decide to make use of this lucky girl's power. I know what you're after anyway. You like need to win something, right? With those CDs? I knew it. I figured it's not like you don't want to go out on a date all of a sudden. Yeah, I guess this takes place uh, earlier. She's a bit young to be a millennial in that. Um, yeah, I guess yeah, she's one of the uh, younger on the younger side of millennials if she's twenty six. Uh, sorry. You're right, that's not like me at all. That's not true. Most millennials were born in the 80s. Boy, Twilight. And she's likely a 90s kid. And, uh, Ren, I mean. Early, early 2000s. Mitachi san had seen right through me. She nuzzled up against me triumphantly. But I'm really happy. I mean, this is still a date. No, oh, I'm good. I knew the choice of words had been unlike me, but having a poke fun at me about it was super embarrassing. I thought these kids these days treated everything as a date. At least, according to anime. Really, I didn't know anything about the youth of today. Especially cool, trendy kids like her. So, what is CD did you buy? Uh, uh, um. I hesitated, but for Otachi san, cheekily snuffed one of the CDs out of the bag in my hands. Hello, Sloom, welcome to the stream. Uh, uh, don't! Uh, uh, don't! 
Hello, Marm. Welcome to the stream. Are these the guys you're into? Wait. Why are there so many? Uh, no, uh, that's all the characters. She stared at the cover with interest. All the Kensho characters were gathered together, like some kind of group photo. This is the one I like. <laughs> oh god! What? It's like a kid! Kuro, you're a Shotokan. Kuro touched his own, followed my finger to the character, then gulped at me. He's not a bloody kid! Akiyama Kohei-kun is a swordsman in his 80s! So he's an old man. <laughs> he's not an old man! Oh my god. I restrained myself from yelling any further. Passes by were already giving us curious looks. <sighs> anyway, give it back. Are you mad at me? Uh, no. Ah, come on, I'm sorry. She held the CD out to me apologetically. Oh, I couldn't tell whether she was serious or messing with me. Oh wow, there's choices. Oh wow. I didn't realize there would be choices. I'm sorry for lying. I was in the wrong too, so it's only right. I apologize. Rotati-san's eyes widened in surprise. Akuru! Sorry for wasting your time on Feeling awkward, I averted my gaze and tucked my hair behind my ear. Rotati-san stared at me in amazement. Three more seconds before finally breaking the silence. <laughs> <laughs> you are so cute! I so want to kiss you right now! Huh? Can I kiss you? My mind went blank at the unexpected proposition. For a I was already reaching out a hand toward my cheek, ready to make good on the word. I quickly got a hold of her wrist and pulled it away. Stop! Stop right there! No? I'm not allowed? Dame desu. You are not allowed. Mm, uh, so that's how it is. Do, uh, anyway, thanks for today. I'm going to head home. <laughs> what already? Oh, can I come with? <laughs> oh. What? Furutachi son spun around in front of me, pouting sulkily. Next word is out of her mouth was surprisingly convincing. These CDs are for like a lottery, right? So don't we like need to stay together till you know we give one? She had a logical point. The CDs only contain the lottery tickets. The draw for the fan meeting would take place several weeks from now. Uh, that's true, but it's not like we can be together all the time. That wasn't possible, so not unless you were married or something. We can live together! Uh, what? I barely knew this girl. Yet for her part, she didn't seem at all bothered by the fact. What's the big deal with staying here in their place for a while? I still got a class during the day and my part time job. Okay. Uh. Well, she has a job, so yeah, she is, yeah. 
I, I have no idea how this girl's mind works. How can I possibly live with her? I wouldn't even begin to imagine it. On the other hand, being around her would mean winning that coveted two percent probability ticket. The two opposing views fought in my mind. Yeah, uh, no, but you don't even know me. And I doubt your parents would be okay with you staying at the stranger, some stranger's house for, for days at a time. Yeah. I knew it. Nah, I really live on my own anyway. Huh? In a split second, her previous cheerful demeanor had vanished. She looked down at the ground and spoke in a sad whisper. She lives alone. At her age? A scene from a TV show I've been watching the other day popped into my head. A delinquent girl wandering the city streets at night. Older men with ill intentions approaching her. The dark images swirled in my mind. She looks so mature. She's still pretty much a kid, after all. I feel a lot safer with someone competent like you around. Oh, <laughs> competent. <laughs> well, I... Uh, <laughs> Can I? At any point, I think it's not working. Oh. You're out. Yay! In an instant, her gloomy expression had vanished, like dew under the sun, and her eyes sparkled. Too soon. But it was already too late. For Itachi son the charm with mine and set off, pulling me along with incredible force. I already regretted everything. Ah, oh, there's the poster of the dude. I walked the route from the station to my place and, like I'd done a hundred times before, and stepped into the familiar apartment. But today there was one big difference. Thanks for having me! There was someone else in the space I usually shared with only myself. That was strange enough, but Red's flashy figure was like a jar of gulp of beads, and he spilled all over my neutral toned apartment. Akuru, where's the bathroom? Uh, over there? Hey! The moment I answered, she was already flinging open the door and marching inside. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I. Oh, I see the other figures above the TV. A uh, thanks, apparition. Extra toothbrush, check. Men's razor, check. All negative. Huh? Crockery for one. Whoa, hang on. Why do you have so many mugs? Uh, next to the, be the bedroom. Hey, wait, that's mine! The bedroom was where I kept all my precious posters and other merch. And not only that, but an entire bookshelf of comics featuring men in compromising positions. <laughs> oh, he is the guy she was trying to pull, Void Dweller. Oh, what do we have here? No! I dashed after her! She was already staring in a different direction when I, to what I had predicted. Unceremoniously crashed into the bookshelf. 
Rotati-san stopped rummaging through the bedside table to stare at me. Wide-eyed. What are you doing, Akudu? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> How dare you suggest anything like that? Uh, nothing of the sort. Uh, loving my sore nose. I look down at Rotati san sitting on the bed. She's been calmer than before, no longer searching frantically for something. What in the blue blazes are you doing? Well, I had to check whether or not you had a partner. I don't want to be too timed. Partner? I repeated the word to myself. I'd never even thought about it before. You really think I'd be here if I you'd be here if I did. Besides, it's none of your business. Huh? But it totally is. Huh? I told you I like you, remember? Oh. I see. So that's how it is. Just as I was puzzling over her, my vision flipped upside down. Like saying a pair of pale, sparkling eyes were right in front of my own. Uh oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Already! <laughs> uh oh. Oh my god. Her previous innocent smile had vanished, replaced by an intense stare. Just so close I could only feel her breath on my face. I wanted to look away, but for some reason I couldn't. Oh boy. Hello, Strawberry. Welcome to the stream. Akuru. Uh, Akuru. Da, da no? uh, oh, what's wrong? Uh, are you not feeling well? <laughs> My head spun like a... Yeah, barely form words. Uh, I've never had another woman of my personal space like this before. I felt like I might break out in a cold sweat. The tense atmosphere roughly loosened. With a soft giggle for a touchy on stroke of my cheek. Well, I swirled at the sensation. Particularly sensation, she frowned. <laughs> Are you for real? You really don't get it! <laughs> uh, get what? I had no idea what she was talking about. One minute she was like a clingy kid, the next she was laughing at some joke I wasn't in on. <laughs> Wake up already. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> the sweet scent of apricots filled my nose. A soft sensation across my cheek made me gasp. Huh? I'll leave it at that for today. Huh? There was a bashful tinge to her tone. Before I could work out what was going on, she continued. <laughs> Lesbian, just putting that out there. <laughs> As if you couldn't tell already. Huh? Lesbian? What in the bloody hell is that? I have no idea. I've lived on a rock my entire life. Huh? So, she likes girls. My mind couldn't keep up. All our previous interactions spun through my mind like a kaleidoscope. And does this mean that this all hasn't been a joke to her? I couldn't speak. The girl before me put her finger to her lips, teasing me. <laughs> so we're gonna smell the lilies, Oki, okay, darling. Or are you more of a honey? Here we go. Oh, wow, we have a whole opening. Oh, wow. Did they get into, like, an idol thing? Interesting.
Oh, yeah, she is a singer of some kind. Oh, wow. I'm not too worried about YouTube because uh, a seabed had way more. Oh, Ren's name is literally love. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> a seabed had way more sus scenes. Uh, so, yeah. A soft, warm sensation. Yeah, the art style is gorgeous. I shifted him with the weight atop my arm. Uh, the faint breath across my neck tickled. Time drifted by like soft, fluffy cotton wool. Uh, the chill of winter still lingered in the air, but I was toasty warm here. The soft sensation and faint sweet fragrance was so nice, I wanted to stay curled up here all day long. Uh, today is... I ran through the ships, stewed in my mind. Right, today was my day off, which meant... Uh, Akuru. Uh, right, today was a day off. So I should have been able to relax in bed, but... Uh, oh. Cracking open my eyelids, I looked around. There was a lime green ceiling in the walls. My left side felt strangely cold. I was pressed up further against the window side than usual. I caught a glimpse of clavicle peeking up from the loose collar of a shirt. How bloody hell! What exactly did I do last night? Such a gorgeous pale decolletage. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Why are you sleeping in my bed? In my arms was a girl who smelled like flowers. She looked younger without makeup. Or maybe that was just a sleepy look on her face. It was too cold on the sofa. My anger deflated in the face of a nonchalant expression. Forgetting about trying to extract myself from her, I babbled on. <laughs> That's no reason to... And I said I'd take the sofa, but you told me to take the bloody bed! Uh, you're so noisy. Don't you dare go back to sleep! I... Uh, I wanted to cuddle with you. Uh, you... You promised from the start, didn't you? I... After yesterday's coming out, uh... For lack of a better term, she'd accepted the separate sleeping arrangement remarkably well. But this must have been her intention all along, for Atati son smiled mischievously and looking the least not the least bit abashed. Uh, are you getting worked up? In a sense. Pressing my hand on my chest. I felt my heart thudding. It was more akin to the palpitations from a haunted house than anything else. Uh, anyway, time to get up. I pulled back the covers, but Furutachi san remained right where she was, in a form of weak protest. Uh, already? Let's snuggle. 
私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私にその気はないからね。私
chattering excitedly. She scoured through the shelves looking for the perfect item. I uh, already have my own. I don't need another. Oh, come on! This is the idea of matching stuff gets you like totally hyped. Not in the slightest. Uh, despite my flat response for Adachi Sun spirits, won't happen one bit. After being dragged around by her for so long, my arm was starting to ache. She giggled, pointing out a pair of mugs. This was starting to seem more like a date for a pair of newlyweds. Akuru! Hora, kochi mite yo! Akuru, come over here! Oh. Uh. Newlyweds, huh? Ne, ne, Akuru! Oh! Hey, hey, Akuru! Nandai, Len. What is it, Ren? Oh, wow, she's already fantasizing. Oh, my God. This soup mug is so cute. Hey, let's get one for Akumi, too. Well, then. Let's get a whole set, shall we? Pink for you, blue for me, and yellow for Akumi. <laughs> oh, wow. Yay! I love you, Akuru. It is, we are almost two hours in. You sure know how to get me to spoil you, Ren. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Oh, why am I the guy in this scenario? Oh, I shook my head to rid it of the fantasy. Brr Crap. This girl is starting to feel real me in. Oh, God. Oh, God, the spaghetti is getting wet, as they proverbially say. Hey, you can't just put it in the basket! I realized that she'd been tossing items into the basket willy nilly. Following her out to stand back up, I saw for Ritachi san cocking her head at me in mock in innocence. Hey, Tome? Huh? I can't? I already have five mugs! Five? For real? So we don't need a bloody nother. Why do you have so many? Do you have a boyfriend after all? Uh, so, you do have a boyfriend? She sounded nervous. I answered curtly. Oh my god. With one of my previous responders. I, no matter how many times I opened the raffle, I always got the bloody mug rather than the poster I was aiming for. It's extortion, I tell you, extortion! I gritted my teeth against the painful memory of the past. Uh, I remember the store worker consoling me after I'd used up every last raffle ticket. <laughs> Uh, then I bought some more at events. Huh? Why'd you buy more? <laughs> you have a problem, Makudu. You have a problem. I think you spend too much on gacha to dis distract yourself from your sexuality. <laughs> uh, anyway. You can use the ones I already have. 
In fact, it'd be a waste not to. Hi. Okay. She sounded a little put out as she shuffled back to my side. After walking around the store for a while longer, I heard a muffled exclamation from her. Oh. Oh. Uh, what? We're in the bed section. Whoa! Really? Akudu, you totally like her too. There's no way. Seriously. Wow. What? what? I can buy you one. <laughs> oh, yeah, seriously! What? You won't buy me a mug, but you'll buy me a bed? She must be rich. She's gotta be rich. She's rich. Just like in Seabed. Just like in Seabed. Well, if I get you a bed, you'll have to sleep in it, right? She's gotta be rich. But I want to sleep in yours! If you want the same bed, then it'd be this one. Single. 27,000 yen. That's... that's very cheap for a whole bed. That'd be like $270? I pointed out one of the beds from the lineup. It was a familiar design with pools underneath, and a convenient socket in the headboard. I didn't mean the same style, but if you want to buy me a new bed that's better for a uh, snuggly, then I'm in favor. I don't snuggle. Letting a protest wash over me like a water off a duck's back. I check the tag. Wow. Wow. She is barely hiding it. But I guess my current bed is pretty narrow, so maybe I should upgrade to semi double. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. She. Yeah. Yeah, she is just like. Oh god. If she was going to be sneaking into my bed every night anyway, I could take this as an opportunity to upgrade. To be honest, I didn't really have the cash to spare, but it wasn't that expensive, was it? Right. Like, who knows what's going to happen in it? Uh, a queen probably wouldn't fit in my room, would it? She's not even listening. Please run, teach her how to be frugal. I sat down on the bed to the size, I thought. I wonder how she thought I was going to sit next to me. But instead, she flopped onto her back with a loud whoop. Well, this one's super hard. Really? Oh, so it is. When I folded her lead and laid down, I found that the mattress did indeed have more recoil to it than my than my current one. It wasn't bad. It's plenty big enough. This could work. Spreading out my arms to get a better idea of the width, the fingertips of my left hand brushed for Otachi-san's shoulder. She just turned in my direction and her eyes met. Hey, so there's something that's been bugging me. She's probably worried about her money. Huh? She moved in a bit closer, regarding me earnestly. Her eyes seemed to glimmer slightly as she hesitantly parted her lips. Oh, Why do you keep calling me for Itachi san? Huh? 
like, can't you call me by my first name? She was looking up at me through her lashes, beseeching me. Suddenly feeling awkward, I quickly sat up. The bed squeaked under me as I sank further into it. <laughs> if it's going to squeak like this, then the bed is off the list. Oh, God. Trying to mentally distract myself, I looked everywhere for Itachi san to lay on the bed. When I need to, I will. You need to now. No, I don't. I mean, it was embarrassing. Sure, I called plenty of girls by their first names before. There was something awkward about this. Not that I really get it myself. Ah, uh, this is the perfect timing in everything. Robin her chin onto the pillow. Rotati san muttered to herself sulkily, feeling a little sorry for her. I addressed her with a slightly kinder tone as I suggested we move on. Mm. <laughs> Awkward silences. Oh, uh, uh, that's it. <laughs> hey, do you really need one of those? After purchasing all the necessities I currently needed, we were about to head home when my gaze landed on a particular stall. Or rather, the store itself, the items. Rather than the store itself, the items it had on display. It's the same one Kohei Kun has! I want it! Staring at a sword, just like the Wakizaki sh short sword Kohi Kohi Kun carried. It seemed that this was a limited time problem store for Children's Day. So a toy sword. Is that like for cosplay? You do that? Uh, no, I don't. But don't you feel like your life would be complete if you had it? Just having it in my room would feel like Kohi Kun was there with me. Dang, Akuru has some serious issues. Wow, she's she's got some issues. This is this is gonna be interesting. And anything that's important to Kohi Kun is important to me too. So you do act like a girl sometimes. It <laughs> uh, I wish you care about the things I like for once. Uh, for a touchy son clung to my arm, looking sullen. She must have looked pretty funny because the store clerk smiled our way. Uh, so, what are you into anyway? You haven't told me. I wanted to look around some more, but I didn't feel like I could talk to, to the clerk and for Atati saw hanging off my arm with, without much else to do. I carried on the conversation. She seemed to be thinking hard, then she glanced my way. Akuru? Akuru? Yeah, uh, what? My condolences. You totally made a joke! Wait, what? How? Wait, she did? Hold on, Where, where's the... She did? Wait. When did she make a joke? Was it the it showed? Wouldn't it mean narcissistic to agree? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think that didn't translate. Uh, I never thought about myself like that before, so I didn't really get it. But for some reason, this girl genuinely seemed to like me. 
Oh, wow. I really don't get why that. Oh, wow, interesting. I didn't understand most of what she said and did, but this was probably the thing that made least sense to me. I thought that she was into girls, but there were plenty of other women out there. So, I thought this from the start, but what's so great about me anyway? We're different ages and we have absolutely nothing in common. Mm. Uh, just a feeling? A, a feeling? It was a simple answer, but... Isn't that a bit too simple? My daddy once told me that if you ever meet someone who makes you feel like you've been struck by lightning, then they're your soulmate. Uh, uh. Which means you're my soulmate, Akuru. Uh, uh. Oh dear. I really did not get this girl. How did someone end up in that with an older stranger? That was such a simplistic reason. Plus, you're super cute. I'm not sure where you got that from. Something felt all being got. Being called cute by a much younger and much cuter girl than me. Who are you blushing? So cute! She presses herself against my arm with a smile on her face way cuter than anything to ever grace my own. You dark samurai welcome to the stream. Uh, when was the last time I could get away with acting so adorable? We eventually finished shopping and headed home. Laden down with bags of daily supplies and one Japanese sword. <laughs> they got the sword! Oh my god! Uh, here. Uh, oh, like this? As soon as I opened the front door, a voice drifted out to greet me. Mm. Yup, looks good. I shouted in the direction of the sound. Tadaima. I'm home. A Akuru, okaeri. Wakuru, welcome back. She poked her head out from the bathroom and grinned at me. Mite, mite. Perfect timing. Take a look at this. I already had a bad feeling about this. I was exhausted from work, so my first instinct was to ignore her. But for a touch, she suddenly already caught a hold of me. Anne was dragging me into the bathroom with her. Uh, what's going on? Ta -da! She had her hands out to the sink area, where two toothbrushes stood in the center. The mirror above had been decorated with what seemed like highlighter pens. Isn't it cute? Uh, very bright. Oh, it's totally cute. Besides a picture of a bunny drawn in pink, there's a speech bubble with the words good morning. God morning. Oh, she's from Southern Rock. <laughs> God morning. Hilarious. Oh, that was on purpose. I think you spelled it wrong. Unless you're talking about some kind of mythological god of the morning. 
What? Where? Here. Give me the pen. Okay. I took the pen from her and had an extra oat of the god. And an art of the morning. Oh, I didn't even see that in the Arwen's thing. When I handed the pen back, she looked up at me with sparkling eyes. <laughs> this feels totally like our first joint learning experience or something. Oh, it felt more like teaching some virgin snotty kid to me. Looking around, I saw this wasn't just a mirror. This drab bathroom is not now punctuated by splashes of vivid color from Hirotachi Song's things. Ooh, I arranged the color in stuff too! When she dragged me out into the kitchen, I found it with garish colors, just like the bathroom. This isn't the most convenient arrangement. Uh, the cooking utensils she'd made me buy because they were cute now hung above the sink. Looking at it from the perspective of efficiency, uh, they were kind of in the way. <laughs> Looks good, right? <sighs> oh, sure, if you must. Still, her enthusiasm was so funny I couldn't help but smile slightly. Listening to her explain why she placed everything where she did was starting to make me feel like we really were living as a couple. Oh wow. Uh, even though she's not my girlfriend. <laughs> Girlfriends aside, I think it'd be nice to live with my husband, okay, Yiku. In fact, I wish we did live together. I bet he'd be excitable as she is. Oh my god. Wow. You need for a hearth. Does it really heat everything all the way through? Oh, you can gaze the utensils with interest while glancing around the rest of the room. It was so endearing, the way its movements reminded me of when he was sword fighting. Ah! Oh, God, it's it's so cute! I want to cook for them every day! Oh, no, wait, I want to cook together! Kaliku was very particular about his food, so he probably wouldn't want to leave it all to me. I made a mental picture of my life together with Kaliku. Oh, I didn't replace the clock yet. Uh, matching crockery with Kohei Kuhn. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh oh, I think I know what's gonna happen. Uh, can't reach. Hey, Akuru, help me! Huh? Hirotachi san's voice pulled me out of my daydream. With Kohei Kuhn back to reality, oops, there goes gravity. Uh, the moment I snap back to my senses. Huh? Red, what in the blue blazes are you doing? Uh, I was just trying to get the clock down, but I can't reach. In a handle of a sword. It was the one I bought when we were shopping together. The same as Kohi Kuhn had. Stop! No! Oh, stop! I'll get the clock! Don't you dare hold my sword! I rushed to stop her as she wielded the sword and achieved like a pair of shears, attempting to pry the clock off the wall. Ren gazed at me in wide-eyed surprise. Oh, this is supposed to be treated with care! Uh, sorry. Oh, what have you been, what have you broken it? Glaring at her, I hugged the sword to my chest. 
but rather than looking apologetic, Ren was still staring at me dumbfounded. Akuru... Imo... Akuru... You just... Nani? Just what? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Never mind. What did she do? I don't get it. She smiled at me, her cheeks flushed. I guess she helped her out. I was confused by the reaction, but at least she seemed to understand. Ah, oh, uh, I'm gonna go clean the bath. Her tone was so elated she could fill a helium balloon, and she skipped off like she was in the best mood ever. Uh, hey, oh, uh, thanks. I thanked her as I tossed my shawl on the sofa. What on earth had gotten into her? <laughs> as I watched her head off to the bathroom, humming happily to herself, it finally struck me. Oh, that was it. I didn't even realize. Oh, I called her by her first name. That was it. Okay, let's see how much where are we at 141. Yep, we definitely still have time. The break room at the Imperial Arso Hotel was quiet and still. The hands of the clock had passed 3 a.m. in a corner of the room and, and in a corner of the room the lights were turned off to allow staff to have some shut eye. In the darkness I slowly opened my eyes. Oi, hi Hoshi. Yo, hi Hoshi. Uh uh. Mataku. Jeez, you're such a sleepyhead. Don't mind me, Maikawa. Akuda's tired from work. Tired from work. Uh, who's there? My head still fuzzy. I slowly opened my eyes. There before me was a beautiful boy with big round eyes and a high straight nose. Maikawa-kun! Maikawa-kun! It was undeniably the husband who had stand up until just half a year ago. My Kawaku! Honestly, you're gonna have to shape up if you want to survive here. This was him wrote to my, my Kawa, already experienced warrior just 15 years of age. Flustered, I lifted up my chair, and under the side of us put his ha hand up to his chin and chuckled. And, and you're Epsian! <laughs> How could you? When was the last time I saw you? Must have been high school. A sweet, terrific face surrounded by shining golden curls. Epsilon. Epsilon was another high school husband of mine. Despite being the enemy, he was wildly popular with female fans. And Kamuke, a, a decade ago, had been awash with his. Oh, it got cut off. Uh, oh, what are you doing here? At the same time as I shouted in confusion. Another figure appeared behind them. The small frame in Indigo Kimono. Could it be? What a rude question. Oh, My husband of Osbandos, the man I stand above all others, the master swordsman, Akiyama Kohikun. They thought you and I had something special. Kohikun said, coming to stand beside me. Wrapping his little body around my arm, he gazed up at me. Huh? And now it's Ren's voice. You're my soulmate. You're not Kohi. Ren! Ren! I'm so happy you finally called me by my first name, Akuru. Ren's a little of facing close to mine. When she was close enough that I could feel her breath across my skin, she slowly closed her eyes and... Stop! Ah! Ah, stop! The loud noise of a chair toppling over echoed throughout the stillness of the break room. Ah, ah, John. Ah, 
Chino, help me! My best friend peered down at me as I puddled on the floor and grabbed hold of her like she was a lifeboat in a stormy sea. She cocked her head at me curiously. You okay? Seemed like you were having a nightmare. Oh, oh what? Oh, it was a dream. Yes, all a dream. Of course. <laughs> Looking around, I found no one there but Chino. I got myself up and sank back down to the chair on the chair. With a sigh of relief as Shino turned on the lights. And what the hell was that all about? You were shouting, RAN! It scared the crap out of me. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, Anything to do with this? Her eyes narrowed mischievously, and she struck up a little finger. I'd never seen anyone make that old-fashioned gesture in real life. Only in anime. Uh, she, she's not my lover! She's just my roommate! Oh, oh my god, they were roommates. Oh, just a roommate, huh? Wait, roommate. <laughs> How don't you start? Her already narrow eyes narrowed even further as she regarded me suspiciously. Uh, yes, you know her already, actually. Remember that lucky blonde girl we met at the cafe before? Huh? 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 A what? I don't shout, you give me a headache! Why did I pronounce what? Uh, did I pronounce something incorrectly? Oh god. What's going on? What do you mean? <laughs> I looked away, wondering to myself what the hell even was going on. But she knew didn't let up on me. <laughs> How the hell did you end up living with some random girl you met in town? What is this, an Eric J? Uh, I couldn't say no. I thought there was no use lying to Shino, so I went in and explained everything that happened after meeting Ren at the cafe. After I'd finished telling her the story, Shino was silent for a moment. Then she muttered to herself, I can't believe you put the moves on that tea bopper. No! I didn't! I caught her off vehemently. I was already exhausted. Enough to front the ways of conference people, harassing me at the front desk. I didn't need this on top of it. <laughs> but she proposed to you, right? She's pretty cute. You should totally go gay for her. Yuri? Go gay? Yuri. Yeah, like totally Yuri. <laughs> No, no way. This isn't a freaking manga. It's a visual novel. Uh, oh, that doesn't really uh, make things a very much big difference. Uh, sure, the situation I was in right now was kind of something straight of a manga or a game. But a Yuri one? I wasn't into that. Yet. Besides... I'm only interested in chasing 2D cards. Being chased by a 3D woman is a way out of my comfort zone. Aww. Uh huh. Shino didn't sound convinced. Still not completely awake, I still face down on the table, enjoying the feel of a cool surface against my skin. Mm, 
You know, I feel like I've heard this story somewhere before. I highly doubt anyone else has been through something as crazy as this. Closing my eyes, I thought back to the dream I'd just been having and sighed even deeper. <sighs> I wish I could see that first part again. Oh, I got it. Huh? After thinking to herself for a moment, she didn't seem to have a light bulb moment. Oh, yeah, she's gonna bring up the thing from the intro. Right, so it was in this old manga. Man, that takes me back. <laughs> you used to read it whenever you were around my place, remember? Huh? Race of aliens invade Earth. And the human leader ends up in this cat and mouse game with the alien heroine. And that one, she's the heroine courting the hero. It's the heroine courting the hero. But it's pretty much the same. Uh, uh, courting? You know that marriage thing was all a misunderstanding! Yep, that part's similar too. I had a vague recollection of the story Shino was talking about. She had a ton of manga, and there was that one particular series I couldn't put down. Right. The heroine thinks this marriage proposal the protagonist makes to his childhood friend is meant for her. See, it's totally the same. <laughs> yes, it went something like that. Thinking back on my fuzzy childhood memories. Right, I was totally taken by that tale, wasn't I? What's the problem? It's like a cat and mouse between an out cute trendy girl and a 2D obsessed geek who lives in her own head. You're a space into the mix and you got yourself one hell of an epic love story. <laughs> Here I go, just lampshading things. I've got enough on my plate without the space part, thank you very much. Damn, Shino. I'm with you here. I love that space battle shit. All those hot young soldiers find themselves on the front lines where friendships and love blossom in the face of imminent death. <laughs> Shino's voice was soft but frantic. <laughs> oh god! You sure love your death gig. Death is the final destination for their relationship and the ultimate climax. Uh, thinking about it, I can see Kohi Kun in a death pick. Uh, stop it! Don't drag my husband into your fantasies! Give Shino an opening and she'd run with it. I like BL too, but I didn't obsess over those relationships like she did. Ultimately, I couldn't deal with dark stories where the protagonist died. And death pick aside. I would love to. Oh, uh, that's sorry, that's a code. A death pick aside, I would love to see more doujinshi. They're having this fan event, but it's still a fledgling fandom. We need something to trigger the boom. She knew I locked her phone and stared down at the screen. Something glimmered in those narrowed eyes of hers. If there were the Kensho only doujin event, Artists will probably make stuff for it. 
But that probably wasn't going to happen anytime soon. Blast. Before my thoughts could go any further, I heard a grave whisper. Narihodo. Of course. Shino pushed her glasses up with one finger, squinting down even more intently at her phone. Her glasses then com became completely opaque. She oh, no, goddammit, it's... She looked like an evil general plotting a next battle move. And there was the shing sound effect. If it doesn't exist, we just have to make it ourselves. <laughs> uh, Shino? The light from the fluorescent lamps glint glinted off her milk bottle glasses. The next instant, the things were flying over her phone with incredible speed. That's right, because Shino does do Shinchi, doesn't she? Shino? Shino? Oh, what are you doing? Trita? Uh... <laughs> Huh? Are you email an event company? What? You already have the venue? What? Oh, did you say? Ah! My memory of what happened after that was hazy. All I knew was that a few days later, I found myself carrying a stack of flyers Shino had des designed for the Kensho only Dojin event. Oh, Shirabu. Huh. So this is your love nest with that teeny bobber. <laughs> okay, you guys. I think uh, this is a good place to stop for today. I have heard this is uh, pretty short. Uh, and it's pretty cute so far. Uh, we'll see where it goes. And uh, yeah, the trails will be tomorrow. And uh, this will continue on Tuesday. So uh, until next time, I will say so long, farewell, I'm free to say goodnight. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.